Hello everyone and good morning from the campus of Antioch College in Yellow Springs, Ohio. I'm Tom Manley, the college's president, and it is my privilege to welcome you to the ceremony for the graduates of the class of 2020. There are many, many people to acknowledge and thank this morning. Because we cannot clap our hands or snap our fingers in appreciation Please join me in placing a hand to the heart to show our gratitude throughout the ceremony. Special appreciation goes to the commencement committee members who have worked conscientiously and creatively to bring this ceremony and all of us together. Kevin Magruder, Nancy Wilburn, Paige Babb, Christine Reedy, April Wolford, David Atkins, Myla Cooper, Anita Brown, J.P. Robinson, Elise Peru, Roger Stapa, Mike Fair, Patty Nally, and Donna Evans. Thank you all. I would also like to take a moment to acknowledge and heartfully thank two past presidents of Antioch College and a retiring faculty member. I hope they are watching. Both presidents continue to work in important ways for the college they still very much love. Joan Stromanis, class of 57, president from 2002 to 2004. Joan recently suffered a severe broken leg, but she's tough, the old word for resilient, and is recovering quickly and we expect she will soon be making phone calls on our behalf again. Thank you, Joan. And a salute, a special salute, to Bob Devine, class of 1967, who served as Antioch's president from 1996 to 2001, and as a faculty member and in other posts from 1969 to 1978, and from 1986 
through 2008. Professor President Devine's exceptional service to the college was recently and deservedly acknowledged by the Board of Trustees when they appointed him Professor Emeritus. Hand to the heart to you as well, Bob. Finally, the incomparable Louise Smith, class of 77, Associate Professor of Performance, has let it be known that she will retire from the college after 25 years, including in the pre-2008 iteration and nonstop of Antioch. We, we wish her well and heartfully acknowledge her many years of mindful and inspired teaching and mentorship to Antioch students and her exceptional citizenship within the college's community. Thank you, Louise. Antioch is a 170-year-old work in progress. That is a big reason why I have chosen to speak to you from the memorial of the college's first president, Horace Mann. An eloquent advocate of public and non-sectarian education, a staunch abolitionist, a proponent of the co-education of women, men, and people of color, Mann saw in Antioch a chance for a college that had never been seen before. He came to Ohio from New England to build that college. And five years later, in delivering the commencement address, he charged Antioch's first graduates with the now famous words inscribed on the base of the monument behind me. Be ashamed to die until you have won some victory for humanity. Thus President Mann framed for that class and for the future of the college an enduring purpose and a call to personal action. Now I must tell you, President Mann was a person of many thoughtful words his inaugural address to the college alone lasted two hours, and his standard commencement address ran approximately one hour each. I promise our entire ceremony will be lightning quick by comparison. I state the obvious perhaps when I say we have come to a world-changing crossroad in human history. Dare we hope this time, that those of us who have benefited from centuries of privilege, power, and wealth we did not labor to create originally, will have the courage and the grace to choose the path of conscience over the way of expediency or excuse. The great social historian and civil rights activist W.E.B. Du Bois asks, all this life and love and failure, is it the twilight of a nightfall or the flush of some faint dawning day? How to tell? What makes this moment different is not a matter of time passing as much as a rising, a forceful, irresistible wind driven by awareness that we must do something that we must exercise our informed agency as humans, individually and collectively, to do something. This may well be what Horace Mann had in mind, and this is what will allow us to choose a dawn over a nightfall. Class of 2020, as Antiochians, we trust you will look for the dawn, remembering that in a universe filled with an unknowable number of possibilities, there is all the hope we require in what is possible. If we act in service to others, if we act for justice. I want to express my gratitude personally and on behalf of Antioch College to all who have made it possible for these students to claim this important part of their life's education loving parents, family, friends, and fellow students, dedicated and caring faculty and staff, inspiring and generous alumni, exceptionally committed trustee volunteers. In lieu of the applause you heartily deserve, 
we place our hands to our hearts to say thank you. To the small but mighty class of 2020, I offer my, our profound appreciation and admiration that through your passions, intellects, and your hearts, this vital day has become possible. You have owned your educations, resumes of accomplishments, and soon you will own your college degrees. You have, you have shown extraordinary perseverance, creativity, and focus to arrive, to arrive at this moment. You have embodied resilience. You have demonstrated the capacity to endure bravely. And through you and your future gifts to the world, Antioch College will endure as well. We thank you. We stand for and with you. And now, it's my pleasure to introduce Myla Cooper, Vice President for Student Affairs and Senior Diversity Officer of Antioch College. She will give the invocation. Once again, it is a great honor to participate in this special celebration. It comes with ease and joy to celebrate our amazing students, the sixth graduating class in the independent Antioch College. Yet at the same time, it is a most difficult space. Class of 2020, some call this the year of clear vision and oh, what our eyes are watching. Class of 2020, you never imagined that you would finish your college career during a global pandemic, wearing masks to protect yourself and others from COVID-19. Class of 2020, you're also finishing your college career during another type of pandemic. Some refer to it as the black pandemic. It too is a virus and no mask can protect us. In my own faith practice, an invocation is the act of invoking the presence of God for protection, blessing, and guidance. Antioch College embraces diversity and inclusion. We recognize and honor the different and various beliefs among us. So as has been my tradition for, the, for now the third year, I offer a brief moment of reflection, still meant to invoke, to appeal, and to implore. First, I invite you to a moment of silence, perhaps in your own tradition, prayer, meditation, contemplation, or simply silence. Perhaps for gratitude for your Antioch education and those who made it possible, contemplation on the injustice in our country and world, contemplation or soul searching of your responsibility to act for justice, thoughts, prayers, light, and love for the families and friends of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and countless others. You choose your thoughts in this moment. After the death of Ahmad Arbery, NPR's Morning Edition asked for reactions in the shape of a poem. They received over 1,000 entries. NPR's poet in residence, Kwame Alexander, took lines from some of the submissions to create a community poem for Ahmad, running for your life, he called it. Time will not permit me today to read the entire poem, so I took some excerpts, added a few of my own, and change the title to Run for Justice. What is the color of air? Who owns the right to breathe? I can't breathe. Is there justice for all in the land of the free? What is the vaccine for this pandemic? Another black body shot. My country tis of thee. After the bullet leaves the chamber, sweet land of liberty. It cannot be recalled. Of thee I sing. Pain too hard to bear, fist pumping out the beat. Desmond Tutu said, if you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. Run for justice, class of 2020. 
We fight for humanity because broken hearts still beat, because justice peaks around the corner. Class of 2020, stand up, speak up, show up, run and run hard. Run for justice and don't stop. You were built for this and I'm counting on you. Ashe. Now it is my pleasure to introduce Maureen Lynch, the chair of our board of trustees. Greetings and salutations to the class of 2020 from the Antioch College Board of Trustees. I'm Maureen Lynch, chair of the board. My graduation gift to you is a very short speech. First, congratulations to each of you and to your families. You don't need me to tell you that this is a year unlike any other in your lifetime or in mine. So, 2020, and it's only June. But you've made it to this day through good and bad times at Antioch, through co-op experiences, and a sudden shift to online learning. You've also survived the double pandemic of COVID-19 plus the pandemic of racism that has infected our country ever since it was colonized. I know some of you have lost family or friends to one or both of these pandemics. We mourn with you and share your sorrow. Some of you, maybe all of you, have also been part of the urgent, compelling movement that is demanding real change now across the country and around the world. You're graduating into hard times and exciting times, full of possibilities. There's so much work to be done. Your Antioch experiences have prepared you to do it. You have, we all have the power to make change, and you also have the advantage of youth. There's an old union organizing song about the death of a leader, Joe Hill, that says, don't mourn, organize. An update for 2020 could be do mourn and then organize. And please vote. Consider working for a candidate who will make the changes you want. Work against voter suppression by registering to vote as soon as you can. Depending on where you live, it may not be as simple and easy as it should be. At commencement last year, I spoke about the necessity of joy. That is not the theme this year. But I want to close by quoting President Barack Obama speaking to black youth on June 3rd. He said, quote, I want you to know that you matter, your lives matter, your dreams matter. You should be able to learn and make mistakes and live a life of joy. That is our wish for you. Good luck, stay well, and thank you. Next will be Kevin Magruder, who will introduce the student speakers. Good morning. I'm Kevin Magruder, Vice President for Academic Affairs and Associate Professor of History here at Antioch College. It is my honor to introduce two members of the class of 2020 who will share their own reflections on their unique Antiochian experiences. With great joy and pride, I introduce our first speaker, Athena Dionysia Hunter Peterson. She was born in the Bronx, New York, and is graduating with a Bachelor of Arts degree with a self-designed major in critical race and economic justice. At Antioch, she was very active at the Wellness Center and worked as the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Miller Fellow for the Coretta Scott King Center. She centered her senior project around improving the overall experiences of marginalized and racialized students at Antioch. Hello to the class of 2020 and our loved ones. I'm so blessed to be standing here. I'm sitting, but you get the point. And I'm so appreciative of the people who helped me achieve this goal. First, I want to thank God, my ancestors, the universe, my mother, my beautiful son slash emotional support animal, um, Minnie Cooper Downey Jr., a.k.a. Coopy, as you know, I'm on campus. My wonderful brother, Dionysus Ray Hunter. I want to thank Donna and Register for always having a positive attitude and holding down Antioch. I want to thank Brian Cott for making me fall in love with nature. I still don't like roaches, but damn it, Brian, I'm from the Bronx. I want to thank my advisor and PICO professor, Sean Payne. He's an incredible asset to Antioch and someone that continuously helps make my dream of being here in front of you great people today come true. Thank you, Myla, for being a superwoman and reminding me that I can do all things that Christ, through Christ who strengthens me. 
um, and also giving me a job at the CSKC. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, JP. Like, seriously, thank you, JP. Thank you for being an amazing friend, advocate, and person for me and everyone I love on this campus to come to for refuge. Thank you, Marianne Davis, for the intense but gratifying readings and the dark chocolate. And thanks, Lou, for leaving and coming back. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you for dealing with the student who took Christian philosophy before I took your class. Thanks, Didier Franco, for teaching me a little bit of Spanish. Ya tu sabe. And thanks to all my wonderful friends at Antioch, such as, but not limited to, Feroz, Mel, Amira, Kellen, Ashley, Sarah, Alexis, DJ, Ray, Ray, Clarence, Royce, Alexander, Rin, Chris, Ben, Michelle, Kebe, Carlos, M Mari, Julian, and my bestie Maria, thank you to my best friends from before Antioch was of even a figment of my imagination. Sydney, Christine Humphrey, Nicole Hernandez, Hattie Lemon, I love you all and thank you. Now, Antioch has been far from a fairy tale. I have experienced so much pain and at some points this college has left me in despair, feeling broken, unappreciated, both hypervisual and incredibly neglected and devalued. Can't forget that one. There were times where <laughs> I wanted to drop out, get hired and fired from Magic City for advocating for sex workers' rights and work a miserable nine to five. However, there's an upside. I knew deep down inside my heart, right next to my sassy artery. Now, I didn't take anatomy, but I know it's present in me. There was a fire and a drive to be someone who could help another little black girl with an absent dad and very little support Give another little girl like that a real chance to prosper and thrive. And I don't mean that in a capitalistic way, Antioch. So don't come up, don't come at my neck. I mean that in a realistic way for being something and someone I can be proud of. Now, I'm not saying during graduate school, I'm not gonna drop it like it's hot because I would be straight lying. I practically hopped out the womb twerking and dancing so that won't change no matter how much education and knowledge I receive. Now, I know a lot of you wanted to see me come up here and talk about how Antioch both mentally and physically screwed up my college experience and made me feel like less of a person. Oh, and being performative at times where marginalized and racialized students were in need of aid, the Antioch did that too. Now, although that's accurate and zero deception was indicated, Antioch gave me the tools to survive life, survive throughout life. For a black woman like me, nothing in life has been handed to me by any institution and it won't start now. I have had to work for everything I've wanted and I know I'm capable of that and I will be turned down by and for people who are less adequate than I am. But nevertheless, I will continue to fight. And I have always been a fighter, but Antioch helped me craft those skills and chalk it up to life experience. But through all of the dilemmas and the tragedies at this school and in my life, I have come and I have conquered Antioch. Thank you, mom, for believing in me and always supporting your daughter. Even though you stay coming at my neck and nagging me, thank you. And this goes out to my little siblings, James, Elijah, and to my little cousins, especially the older ones like Sophia, Mia, Elijah, Jose, Cedric, and family. Here, look, I did it. To everyone who said to me, I would never accomplish anything in my life. Look, I did it. And to all of my haters, kiss my ass, but also look up and see, I did it. And you can do it too. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Let's come and conquer the world now. Ciao. Our second speaker is Truth Garrett, who is graduating with a Bachelor of Arts degree with a self-design major in hip hop education. He is a poet born in Indianapolis, Indiana. Before coming to Antioch, Truth was a sound engineer for the late Johnny Wilder Jr. He also served as the hip hop correspondent for the website Raw Roots. After Antioch, he plans to stimulate young minds with his hip hop education program. He will also continue an oral history project documenting the Afro-American Studies Institute founded in the 1960s at Antioch College. My words put into the air causes friction, era, era, tating the ears of those that listen because 
Many things are heard, but not all perceived. I was singled out most of the time in Antioch simply because of what I believe, such as my Antioch steps have order when seen from higher points. Through divine vision, me and Antioch College paths cross like light through a prism. 1999, Central State. I walked into my advisor's office demanding to be put into a plate. And it just so happened a small college around the way wanted to collaborate. I had to research this place. And what I found left me amazed. Coretta, Sterling, and Dr. Francis Krauss Wilson were products of this place. Here's a thought. Even then, I knew there was no coincidence. My life was always a series of extraordinary events. I am living the alchemist. Twice a week, I came to Yellow Springs to rehearse a play written by Antiochian. A new world was open to me. I ain't gonna lie. Some things blew my mind. Others were ahead of their time, like degrees that were self-designed. Just like the alchemist, and thanks to the solar heat wave, Johnny Wilder, my dreams would lead me to travel from Ohio far and wide. Along with the wisdom of Johnny Wilder, Antioch never left my mind. Like Malcolm Garvey Huey, Antioch's legacy spoke to me. But it seemed out of reach for an original man like me. Fast forward, to the rebirth of truth. Around the time I discovered the ability to use hip hop to teach the youth, Antioch was looking for new rebels to rebuild a school. At first, I applied, they didn't see truth. But now I stand here before you on the shoulders of giants who came before. I stand here before you after sleeping in my car the last few months before I joined this school. I stand here before you, richer in the understanding of myself and others. I stand here before you with a clearer view of my now beloved school. I stand here before you, proudly joining an alumni charged with winning victories for humanity. And as I stand here before you, this might surprise you, but Antioch still has a lot of work to do on itself and the world. Maybe its work will never be completely through, forever in a state of renewal. I share with my predecessors some of the good and bad things I've been through. Yet, my arrival back was timed perfectly because these current Antioch lessons is what the world needs. So I exit armed with better tools, a slightly better worldview, as a custodian and guardian, hip hop healer with the ability to feed more youth because of my co-op experience directly in the classroom. Now I ask you, look closely. I am the things this world has been taught to fear and the root of all things it holds dear. On this campus, truth was still not present. It's like no one knew who they were addressing, a survivor of King Herod's search. Back like Sojourner with a poetic torch of hope. My shoulders are ready. My mind is a map, equipped to show others where the exit is at. Responsibility is the key. Antioch taught me to create my own keys and blaze a path all can see. To my current Antiochians, I am thankfully passing this great opportunity. And now I set off to win victories for human unity. Peace.
I am excited to have this opportunity to recognize Antioch College's Southwestern Ohio Council on Higher Education Excellence in Teaching Award winner. The winner was selected through a process of community nomination and peer review by a selection committee comprised of tenured and long-standing faculty colleagues at Antioch College. Luisa Bieri, Assistant Professor of Cooperative Education. Her nominees mentioned, we commend Luisa Bieri for five years of service to Antioch College. She has worked diligently at growing the Prison Justice Initiative, at linking service to curriculum through her new course, Antioch Community Action, and at revising the curriculum, especially in developing dialogue across difference and the transnational studies focus. In addition, Luisa's service centers partnerships with the broader Yellow Springs community. And in this way, she especially embodies the ethos of Antioch College. Today, I have the great pleasure 
and honor of introducing Julia Reichert, one of the college's most accomplished graduates. Julia is a member of the class of 1970, so in addition to being our commencement speaker, she is celebrating the 50th anniversary of her graduation. Congratulations, Julia. Julia Reichert is a filmmaker, educator, and activist. She says the activist comes first. She began her work at Antioch wanting to comment on women's issues, coming to Yellow Springs from New Jersey, where she was born and raised. On campus, she became involved with WYSO, hosting programs and learning how to interview, how to cut tape, how to edit, how to mix, mix music, how to tell a story, how to tell a story with a beginning, middle, and end. That work led to Julia's first film, made with fellow student Jim Klein, which actually began as her senior project. It was titled Growing Up Female and was the first feature documentary growing out of the women's liberation movement. In 2011, Growing Up Female was selected for the National Film Registry for the Library of Congress. And Julia's work in film and activism has continued from her time at Antioch. She co-founded New Day Films, the democratically run documentary film distribution cooperative. 49 years old, New Day Films is going strong and now has over 150 active members. Julia is a four-time Academy Award nominee for her films Union Maids, 1977, Seeing Red, Stories of American Communists, 1984, The Last Truck, Closing of a GM Plant, 2010, and of course, American Factory, 2019, which won the Oscar for Best Documentary in 2020. Julia's film, Lion, A Lion in the House, 2006, with her longtime partner, Stephen Bognar, a co-production with ITVS, was a four-hour, two-part primetime PBS special and won the primetime Emmy for Exceptional Merit in Nonfiction Filmmaking, as well as the Henry Hampton Award for Excellence in Film and Digital Media. Among her many awards is the 2015 Antioch Alumni Association Rebecca Rice Award for Outstanding Career Achievement. Julia's films, co-directed with Jim Klein and later with Steve Bognar, have screened at many of the top festivals in the world, including Sundance, New York, Telluride, IDFA, Hot Docs, Full Frame, True False, and AFI Doc Film Festivals, among others. Her films have been broadcast on HBO, PBS, Netflix, and around the world. For 28 years, Julia was Professor of Motion Pictures at Wright State University. She served on the board of the Ohio Humanities Council. She advised the Independent Feature Project and the Association of Independence in Video and Film. Julia is a member of both the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences and the Television Academy. She is also a proud mom and grandma. Julia was the advisor on the creation of the IFP and the PBS series POV. She has mentored dozens of emerging filmmakers over the years and is co-founder of Indie Caucus, the documentary action group working to keep the documentary form alive and well on PBS. She is also the author of Doing It Yourself, the first book on self-distribution in independent film. In 2018, the International Documentary Association gave Julia their Career Achievement Award. In 2019, the Museum of Modern Art and the Wexner Center for the Arts teamed up to present a traveling retrospective of Julia's films. Julia was the first choice among the class of 2020 
to be their commencement speaker. We applaud their intelligent taste and truly, truly thank Julia for her gracious acceptance of their invitation. My friends, Julia Reichert. Greetings to the graduating class of Antioch College 2020. Athena, Carlos, Mary, Adam, Truth, Zoe, Nadia, Seamus, Chris, Judas, Ben, Caitlin, Galen, Tom, and Alex. Congratulations. 50 years ago, right now, and in this same place, I graduated from Antioch College. You were graduating at an unprecedented time, but you were ready. When I graduated, students had just been killed at Jackson State and Kent State just about a month before, as the Vietnam War raged on. That was an unprecedented time. But we were ready. We have to be. Antioch lives on in me. I'd like to tell you a little bit about me, about my life, so you see why I say that with such certainty. Did I ever wear shoes in the summer? Or a shirt, even? Here's me on a typical day at the Jersey Shore, out on our dock. I was a ball of curiosity and energy who could lose herself in the bay. Boats, fishing, clamming, spearing, crabs, or in the ocean, on the ocean's edge, walking for miles down New Jersey beaches by myself, we spent all summer on the Jersey Shore, living in a trailer, my brothers and I and my parents. I loved nature. I hated dresses. I was a tomboy, a geeky, bespeckled girl. My mom worked a 3 to 11 shift at a hospital. Dad was a butcher, never finished eighth grade. He brought his pay home in cash, in a little manila envelope in a shirt pocket every Friday. There were no books or pictures in my house, or anyone's house I knew. But we had a secure life because he was a union man. And he was a Republican. We owned our home, our cars. We had vacations. I was a good student. I loved to write. It was the Cold War. We scanned the skies for Russian missiles. Whispers of the civil rights movement reached our little town. I realized I wanted to be a journalist. I always thought, if we could just understand each other, there would be no wars, no conflict. Yet in the real world, then, the options for girls' futures were teacher, secretary, or nurse. Then, marriage. Here's a picture from my life now, at 74. My two grandkids in the Glen, the stepping stones across the stream. I've been thinking about my stepping stones of life. How did I get to where I am from where I was? How did that happen? Often, we don't realize that a decision, a choice on a day, is a stepping stone. Other days, like today, you know. Well, my dad got me a camera, a 35 millimeter rangefinder Argus, when I was about 13. I really wanted to learn how to use it, so I found some old books about photography at the library. I learned about f-stops, depth of field, focus, framing. I mailed my rolls of film away and got prints back in the mail. Life magazine came to our doctor's office, and I loved the photographs. I wanted so much to get out of my small town on my own. The idea of going to college caught hold of me. 
even though no one in my family or in my neighborhood had ever gone to college. In our library at the high school, there was a book called Lovejoy's Guide to Colleges. It gave you a description of each college, the cost, and their address. So I started sending postcards asking for catalogs. I started with the A's. I rode away to Adelphi, Albion, and found Antioch. But actually, I wrote all the way through Bates, Cornell, Swarthmore, all the way through the alphabet. I had stacks of catalogs several feet high in my bedroom and read them late into the night. I picked Antioch College because it was the furthest away in Ohio, 600 miles. I paid my own way. Antioch, you could work half the year, travel abroad, not have to go home all summer. I'd worked since I was 15, so that appealed to me. In our freshman dorm that first week, all the girls sat around in a circle and were asked to say what our parents did, where we came from. So one girl said, my dad is an engineer. Another, my dad and mom are lawyers. Another, my dad is a poet. My dad is a professor at a university. My mom plays in the symphony. When it came to me, I couldn't say, My dad works in the meat department at a grocery store. He's a butcher. Instead, I said that he was the manager of a grocery store. Even that was way below the other parents' occupations. Right away, I started developing a story of who I am. A false story, based on shame. Who I am is not right here. And there would be more lies to follow. After a while, I went into college friends' homes that were much bigger, much somehow more sophisticated, with books, photos, paintings. There were actual discussions around the dinner table with glasses of wine. In my house growing up, dinner was five minutes. We never talked around the dinner table. At college, I did find others who loved photography, and I learned to develop pictures. We created the first dark room at Antioch, where I spent hundreds of happy hours. We learned about photographers of the day, Robert Kappa, Dorothea Lang, Robert Frank, Henri Cartier-Bresson, Bruce Davidson, beautiful works of art, but capturing everyday people. I didn't realize till years later that we were not taught about black photographers who were working, like Gordon Parks, Roy de Carava. Seeing certain films impressed me deeply. Wiseman's Titicut Follies, Edward R. Murrow's Harvest of Shame, about migrant worker families. Night and Fog. I didn't know there was a Holocaust until I saw that film. I realized that through seeing films, people could be exposed to alternative points of view on history, on life, on themselves, because I was. Here's a stepping stone, my first Antioch co-op job, the Cleveland Press, copy boy. Remember, I want to be a journalist. When the writers called boy, that was me. I noticed right away that there were no women on the floor, except in the style and fashion area way back there. I recently came across this little newsletter put out by the Cleveland Press Composing Department, and I was so struck by the casual, unexamined sexism. See this? They told me the picture was to be about my good posture. I was uncomfortable when I saw this picture of me, embarrassed really, but I actually didn't understand why. After about two years of college, I dropped out. It was just all too much. I never felt I fit in. I felt like an imposter. The male dean who I'd gone to talk with said, yeah, you should drop out. 
You should go to a state school. Keep your grades up for now. Looking back, I realize, I began to understand how hard it is to change one's class background, to move up and be comfortable. By the way, I never had a female or a person of color as a professor at Antioch. Now, in that time, as a dropout, a lot changed in the USA. The hippies, the anti-war movement. I got a job in New York City at the West End Bar uptown near Columbia University. When the Columbia student strike took place that spring, 1968, I was serving beer to tables full of students, talking about politics and issues. Sometimes I'd try to join in. I was their age. I was a student, too. But since I was the waitress, they ignored my questions. I was put in my place. I came back to Antioch after 15 months, a big stepping stone. The radical left came into my life. It was all around. The anti-war movement, the Black Power movement, the Black Panthers, reading Marx, Engels, Ho Chi Minh, Lenin, Chairman Mao, Che Guevara. Reading all this new literature, I came to understand the word class as an identity and more important, as a motivating force in history. The revelatory thought that the working class has been a driving force in history, and that I, rather than being nothing, an imposter, or my background being something I have to hide and lie about, that I have a part to play as a working class person. That was a major stepping stone. I met Jim Klein and we became radio geeks. We worked at WYSO-FM Radio, the student-run station. I learned most of the skills of being a filmmaker, how to edit, how to mix music, how to tell a story in a time frame, how to do interviews, how to think about the audience. The biggest influence, the one that made the most sense to me, was the women's liberation movement. Saying that women's liberation for me was transformative is too small a word. We believed the personal was political. A basic idea of the movement was consciousness-raising groups. I was in the first one at Antioch College. There were five of us. Our CR group took on so many topics. What are our feelings about men? What are our feelings about our mothers? We talked about our bodies, sex, menstruation, our intelligence, how we felt about so many things. We sat around one night a week for as long as it took, each of us in her turn, to say what we had to say and feel what we had to feel. Every night, it turned out that what we thought was our own personal shame was really the oppression of a group, a huge group, women. I came to understand self-censorship, self-hatred. Women's liberation was radical to its core. It went to the idea of how people think about themselves and others and all the structures of our society. Women's liberation demanded change in the bedroom, the kitchen, the office. We looked at popular culture's images of women and saw that all the images, movies, magazines, TV, were made by men white men, privileged men. So we realized that we had to create our own images, form a kind of alternative culture, since mainstream culture was so impenetrable for us. Telling stories of real women, that was a radical act. But make no mistake, we were figuring it out as we went along. We said, we want to be liberated women, but what did that really mean? If a guy said, hey, you're a liberated woman, let's do it, baby. Why are you holding back? Well, what then? Was that what it meant to be liberated? January 1st, 1970. I had an idea for my senior project at Antioch. Why not make a film? A real film with sync sound. Film combined radio and photography. And a film could reach more people than either. 
Why not a film looking at women and girls at different ages? How they see themselves? Kind of like our CR groups. That became Growing Up Female, a film that explores the lives of six girls and women, ages 4 through 34. Now, how could that happen? We didn't have a real camera. We didn't have a professional tape recorder. We didn't have any money for film stock. I'll admit that we begged, borrowed, and stole what we needed to make this film. A real Antioch lesson. Do it yourself. Find a way to do it. It was filmed in basically 10 days over spring break in March and early April of 1970 in towns in and around Yellow Springs. We edited it right after the students were killed by National Guard at Kent State and Jackson State. We edited on an upright moviola that broke down every day and that we had to fix. One day, I edited. One day, my partner Jim edited. One day, I edited. One day, Jim edited. We believed that the only way to achieve equality was to actually live it. So even though Jim found it easier to edit, we always made it equal. Every film I've made, I've learned. But what I learned from growing up female was probably the most valuable and motivating lesson of my entire life, which is to use your work to try to change the world. I guess it was Horace Mann looking down on me, asking me about what victories I was going to win. I did everything I could to help the women's movement grow, to help the ideas I had found so very powerful spread to others. But how could we find distribution for the film? How could we get it out? Well, I will mention an important lunch, a stepping stone. A very good distribution company was interested in growing up female. They took Jim and I out to a fancy lunch at Rocco's Restaurant in the West Village of New York City. They presented the contract. Seven years. We give you an advance. We asked, we want to be sure we can show the film in women's prisons. They said, do they have any money? We want to get the film to high school teachers. Do they have any money? Well, what about women's centers? What is that? We realized that the film would no longer belong to us. We'd have no say over the advertising or the description. You are the artist, honey. Let us handle all the rest of it. That would be a betrayal of the reasons we made the film, a betrayal of our core values to help change the world. We realized we'd have to do it ourselves, get this movie to audiences. This actually led to the creation of New Day Films, which we started the next year and which went on to become a large filmmaker-owned distributor for independent films, and it still is today. It's a democratically run, worker-owned co-op of filmmakers, well over 100 filmmakers. There's no president, vice president, etc. We operate by consensus, we share the work, and we share profit. We make sure that our films can be used by those who need them. Does that sound familiar? So this particular lunch in the West Village was an axial moment in my life. When Growing Up Female was done, I carried one 16mm print around on a Greyhound bus to find its audience. I went to Cleveland, Ohio. I'd called a handful of friends who were in the women's movement, who agreed to set up a projector and a screen and a sound system, and invite a few other women's movement people to come together in a living room to watch the film. And after they would say, we have to show this film to others. And they would set up a second screening in a church basement, in a high school classroom, and more people would see it. Each time, I got everybody's name and address, and I wrote it down. I would then ask them, do you know anybody in Athens, Ohio, or Washington, D.C.? And sometimes they did. So I took a Greyhound bus to Athens, Ohio. I went to Washington, D.C. I went to Pittsburgh, New York, Boston. And I would do the same thing. Have a screening, collect names, type them up. Discussions were intense after, as the audiences got bigger. There would be fights, threats, walkouts by all the women. 
It wasn't long before Jim and I learned how to design and print this poster on the Antioch Offset Press. We mailed it out to all those people, and orders started pouring in from all over the country. I learned that films can help change the world. Jim and I learned to do things ourselves. We can all do everything. We can all do anything. Here, we learn our core values. We strive for democracy. We build community. And this is Antioch, living in us. Antioch prepared me much more than I realized to enter and impact the world. Graduates, you are entering the world at a very hard time. It is an exceptionally challenging time. But it is your time. It's so easy to feel small, right? Insignificant. But the past weeks have shown us that you and your generation can lead the way beautifully. In ending today, I'm going to leave you with a poem that has guided my life. It's called To Be of Use by Marge Piercy. And I hope it resonates for you. To be of use. The people I love the best jump into work head first without dallying in the shallows and swim off with sure strokes almost out of sight. They seem to become natives of that element with the black-headed seals bouncing like half-submerged balls. I love people who harness themselves, an ox to a heavy cart, who pull like water buffalo with massive patience, who strain in the mud and the muck to move things forward, who do what has to be done again and again. I want to be with people who submerge in the task, who go into the fields to harvest and work in a row and pass the bags along, who are not parlor generals or field deserters, but move in a common rhythm when the food must come in or the fire be put out. The work of the world is as common as mud. Botched, it smears the hands, crumbles to dust. But the thing worth doing, well done, has a shape that satisfies, clean and evident. Greek amphoras for wine or oil, Hopi vases that held corn, they're put in museums. But you know they were made to be used. The pitcher cries for water to carry and a person for work that is real. Congratulations. President Manley, it is my great honor to present you the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Sciences from Antioch College. Adam Matthew Green, magna cum laude. Carlos Mendez. Seamus O'Flaherty. Christopher James Welter.
Thomas Nolan Amrine, cum laude. Caitlin Elizabeth Killen Bove. Mary F. Evans. Truth Garrett. Nadia Mohal, cum laude. Athena Dionasia Hunter Peterson. Zoe Louise Ritzhaupt. Judas Rose, cum laude. Alexander William Schlosser. Ben Alec Zeitzman. Family and friends, trustees, faculty, members of our community, please join me in congratulating the class of 2020. Now, please welcome Karen Mohauser, the president of the Antioch College Alumni Board. Hello, Antioch, and a very special hello to those of you who are in the graduating class of 2020. Um, and to your family and friends who are with us here today. My name is Karen Mulhauser. I graduated in 1965, and I actually feel like I've never really left Antioch College. I have been on the alumni board and the board of trustees off and on uh, since the 1980s, and I have welcomed co-op students to my home uh, throughout the years, and I can't even count the number of times that I've been on campus. 
But by far, the most important and valuable to me thing that I can do as Antioch College uh, alumni president is to welcome the graduating class and the new alumni to the Alumni Association. So, welcome. It was a serious long time ago that I graduated from Antioch College, but I have such very strong memories. I remember it well, and not just because Martin Luther King was my graduation speaker, but he was, yes. And uh, But it's also because I had that feeling of, uh, thank goodness I'm out of here, combined and competing with the feeling of this is not like coming, leaving for a co-op and coming back again. This, this is an end, but it's also a beginning of a new chapter and a commencement. So welcome to the next chapter of your life. I'm here to assure you, as the newest members of the Alumni Association, that you can always come back. Um, I know how hard it must be to not be able to be with each other in person today. Um, but you can start thinking about maybe coming back here for your first reunion in the fall of 2021. And while uh, you'll still have to ask permission if you can hug each other, because some things will never change, um, it will. I think you'll find it rewarding to be able to be with each other uh, a year plus after you graduated. And so if you're thinking about coming to your reunion and want some ideas, don't hesitate to reach out to me. In the years uh, since Antioch College reopened, I have had uh, future alums, students living with me while they're in DC area for co-op jobs, and I've learned a great deal from them. I know that the current alumni board will learn a great deal from you, and I hope you'll let us know how you think that the alumni board and the board of trustees can help the students who are following behind you. Uh, the year I graduated in 1965 is the year that Congress passed the Voting Rights Act, uh, which were aimed to overcome legal barriers at the state and local levels that prevented African Americans and other people of color from exercising their right to vote, a right that was guaranteed under the 15th Amendment of the United States Constitution. That was a time when many of us thought that one of the final injustices had been addressed. But now, 55 years later, we see how naive we were, and we see that there is still so much work that needs to be done to improve the criminal justice system. But I am hopeful in a way that I haven't been before because I see at the uh, in, in the civil justice system and in the uh, work by citizens around the country that change will happen and there could be diversity, equity, and inclusion everywhere. But we have to work for it. This is a, a democracy still, but if we don't use our democracy by voting and being involved at the local, state, and national level, we could lose our democracy. So I hope that you, as new alums, will work with us as uh, continuing alums uh, to help make Antioch College the best it can be and to work to make our country the best it can be. Thank you very much, and good luck. Bye-bye. Before we reach our conclusion, I want to mention the tradition at Antioch for many years has been for the new graduates to recess to the small mound adjacent to main building and not far from where I'm standing. Last year, in respect for the indigenous peoples whose lands we occupy, we adopted the practice of circling rather than traversing the mound. Our virtual ceremony will observe that practice. And after my closing remarks, please travel with us, accompanied by the World House Choir to the mound where we will conclude today's ceremony. At the outset, I quoted the phrase from President Horace Mann, well known to most of you. Be ashamed to die until you've won some victory for humanity. But now I want to emphasize the few words that preface the idea of winning victories for humanity. 
because they hold, I think, a key in the real poetry of the idea. Man says, I beseech you to treasure up in your hearts these my parting words, be ashamed to die until you've won some victory for humanity. Treasure up in your hearts. A lovely, touching way of saying, hold dear to who you are and will always be. That is the center of us. Not our heads, those brain-filled, powerhouse thinking machines that have no off switches, but in your heart. The heart, that often overlooked, underrated, and underutilized miracle of our bodies and our universe. Our hearts, the beating, living thing over which we place our hands to swear and promise and show our sincerity of intention and to show our love. So before you set out to win victories or take on the burden of shame for failing to do so, consult your heart. It is far bigger and fuller of wisdom than you might imagine. But like any muscle, you have to use it. Allow your hearts to open to the world and to yourselves. Class of 2020, our hearts and our love go with you. And now, my friends, peace to all of you, and join me in congratulating and appreciating one final time the class of 2020. And now for the recessional and the remarkable World House Choir led by Dr. Kathy Roma.
Congratulations, class of 2020. I'm thinking of each of you on this day and your incredible trajectory through your time at Antioch. You will be missed. Um, I'm proud of each of you and particularly my advisees working together over these years and I can't wait to see what the future brings. Remember that we are here for you now and into the future and again, congratulations. Antioch, class of 2020. I want to share with you two lessons that I've learned growing up in Pan-African revolutionary organizations and in the black church. You were born for times such as these and you stand on the shoulders of those who have gone before you. Know that you are magnificently and gloriously made. And as you walk through the world, know that you walk with a purpose to make this world more beautiful than it is today. Congratulations. Yo, class of 2020, you went through some of the toughest shit that Antioch has to offer, and you still made it through. Nicely done. That's excellent. Um, yeah, sorry there's the pandemic, <laughs> but still, nice job graduating. You did good. When you were born, you cried, and the world rejoiced. Live your life so that when you die, the world cries and you rejoice. Congratulations, class of 2020. Go out and do great things. May you live lives committed to justice. May you find resilience so you can stay in the struggle for the long haul. And may love and joy be the foundation of all your work and your being. Yes. You never need to be ashamed. Hi, this is Donna from the Registrar's Office. Congratulations, Class of 2020. You have succeeded to complete your classes, co-ops, language requirement, and senior projects, all while studying remotely in online classes this spring, while not one pandemic was taking place but two. I can safely say Antioch College has prepared you to survive, and you did it. You have succeeded mostly because of you, your hard work and grit. Go out into the world and make it better. And as Horace Mann says, win some victories for humanity. Take care, I'll miss you. And if you need a transcript, you'll know where to find me. Hi, class of 2020. I just have something I'd love to read to you. Um, Angela Davis said that optimism is a political act. And I think that that's really so true in these times and for you all right now. So I'd love to read you something from Alex Steffen from the P2P Foundation. Optimism is a political act. Entrenched interests use despair 
confusion, and apathy to prevent change. They encourage modes of thinking which lead us to believe that problems are insolvable, that nothing we do can matter, that the issue is too complex to present even the opportunity for change. It's a long-standing political art to sow the seeds of mistrust between those you would rule over. As Machiavelli said, tyrants do not care that they're hated, so long as those under them do not love one another. Cynicism is often seen as a rebellious attitude in Western popular culture, but in reality, cynicism in average people is the attitude exactly most likely to conform to the desires of the powerful. Cynicism is obedience. Optimism, by contrast, especially optimism, which is neither foolish nor silent, can be revolutionary. Where no one believes in a better future, despair is a logical choice, and people in despair almost never change anything. Where no one believes a better solution is possible, those benefiting from the continuation of a problem are safe. Where no one believes in the possibility of action, apathy becomes an insurmountable obstacle to reform. But introduce intelligent reasons for believing that action is possible, that better solutions are available, and that a better future can be built, and you unleash the power of people to act out of their highest principles. Shared belief in a better future is the strongest glue there is. It creates the opportunity for us to love one another, and love is an explosive force in politics. Great movements for social change always begin with statements of great optimism. Nothing about the politics of optimism needs to be naive. We can understand that people are fallible, mostly self-motivated and sometimes even mistaken about what's in their own best interests. We can freely acknowledge the tremendous struggle ahead of us and yet choose to remain decidedly optimistic and to work from a fundamental belief in the possibilities of the future. When we do that, we liberate ourselves from some of the burden of despair and powerlessness we've all been saddled with. We need to accelerate innovation and magnify vision. We need to school ourselves in the possible, share ideas, imagine outcomes, and weigh options. Ultimately though, we need something more than better answers. We need millions of people who are willing to teach the teachable, comfort the disheartened, and confront the scoundrels. We need to take our politics public and take on the whole culture of cynical defeatism. We need an optimism uprising. As Clarissa Pinkola Estes says, you were made for these times. Congratulations, 2020. Anyone who can finish college during a pandemic and an uprising, I reckon they can do about anything. And I drink to that. Congratulations, Congratulations. Antioch, Antioch College, College. Class, of Class of 2020. 2020. <laughs>